I don't really think I can ever remember a time where I didn't have depression. I think as a kid it was likely I didn't have it, um, and it's it's definitely something that's recently started to really steal a lot from my life. Um, it, it's it's hard to commit to things. Uh, for for example, like just in the case of my job at the moment, um, I, I've gone through a lot of different jobs. Um, I, I first started off as a programmer. Um, I actually was involved with a couple of, of, of different sort of fairly high high functioning um, programming outlets. I'm not going to mention the name, um, but that I think though industry wide, a lot of people would agree, it's a soul deadening job. So that was something I, I quit, um, and then I went back to study, and I became an accountant which is what I've been doing for the past year now. Um, and actually this has just hit me again. Um, and, and I've, I've just quit. Uh, it's, it's not, f <laughs> it's not always the, f the fairest thing to suffer from. Um, I think that's been my issue has just been, okay, I have this illness. How do I stop it from making me take wrong choices? Um, I, I can remember spending some time sort of stupidly searching the internet and just being like, what is it like to not be depressed? Because I'd love to know. Like, that to me would be really interesting. Like, what is it like to not suffer from something like this, <laughs> where your enemy is yourself and you can't get away from them? <laughs> um for a, a time um i i was very near ending my own life that was that was a fun <laughs> that was a fun period of time um and and i still think that uh, my my death is going to be my own like i'm not going to get old and and be like 80 something and then die i'm probably gonna die by my own hand i think to some that's like really like oh crap really it's, it's a scary thought but to me it's it's like i don't know i think it's become so normal to me and and that's probably a bad thing but i just don't think the idea scares me anymore i don't know it's it's crazy really isn't it when you actually analyze that you know oh shit you're gonna die it's like, well, yeah, we all die eventually, <laughs> you know? I think, though, depression has really, in a way, in certain aspects of my life, I have benefited from it. Because it means I'm not worried about trying new things. I just do it, right? You know? Like, I just bought myself a motorbike. It's one of those things where it's like, well, shit, you know, I want to die anyway. Why, not, why don't I just buy the riskiest vehicle that I can, a motorbike, and just fucking hope one of these days someone hits my ass off the road. I mean, <laughs> so, I, I, you know, that was like two weeks ago. I was like, I want a motorbike. Next, within two days, I went out and bought one. And then I went and did my license um, like a week ago. Um, and it's just in the shop right now getting repaired because I bought a shitty secondhand one. Um, it's actually a pretty good bike, but it's pretty broken. Um, so it's in the shop right now, waiting for my helmet to arrive, and then I'm just gonna get on it, and that'll be, that'll be that. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I think that's a lot of it. It feels like having depression is an addiction, so to speak. Not that I've ever had one. And I think you constantly try to find these coping measures that are not good for you, but you keep doing them anyway because it's like, well, this is all I know. This is this is all I can do. <sighs> so today we're going to be talking about something that is a little bit heavy of a topic. It's something that I've meant to talk about on my channel for a while now, but I just never had the drive or the confidence to do so because... It's just something that's really hard to talk about, but I think that now is a good time to talk about it more than ever because I've been going through some of the worst struggles I've ever faced in my life and 
I think it just does better to talk about it and maybe be able to motivate other people who are struggling like me to try to have their voices heard and to know that you're not the only one out there. But with all that said, let's jump into this. Before the black blotch enveloped my brain, I was definitely more optimistic about life, the world, and society. I had a more gung-ho and expressive attitude and was loud and bold. While I believe I still carry some of those more abrasive qualities to my personality, I'm much more subdued these days. I can still be brash and opinionated when the mood strikes, but I'm also much more cynical and don't have the grand ambitions I once had. Honestly, most of what I want nowadays would be considered offensively quaint compared to the more ambitious among us. But I suppose that's what happens when your own are stomped flat repeatedly until you finally stop trying to inflate them again. I don't really ask for much anymore. When I think of the ways that it affected me, the easiest source to look at is how I produce art specifically when it comes to drawing. I used to draw cartoons. I did that for many years, and before depression took up residence in my pickled mind, I was making comic strips and publishing them online. During the intermediate years, wrestling with mental anguish, seeing myself upon the edge and wishing to step off and embrace oblivion, I didn't draw at all. It wouldn't be until an art class at a university course I enrolled in in 2018 that I picked up a brush and made my very first abstract piece in ink, a moment of spontaneity that really surprised me. I dropped out of the course several months later, but I've since kept up with my drawing after reconnecting with it on that fateful day, and I've almost filled a 60-page sketchbook with black and white abstract drawings I've made just using pen and pencil. All I want to do is draw scratchy textures and oblong shapes now. I don't know where they come from, and I don't know what they mean, but they just keep falling out of my head onto the page. It is odd how my experiences with depression both crippled me and motivated me to lash out in any way I could creatively to distract myself and try to calm down the chattering part of my mind. During those three tumultuous years, I fully embraced a new hobby, YouTube poop. Diving into it headfirst, I taught myself how to edit video by making wild videos of pure abstract nonsense for my own entertainment, where I found comfort, friendship, and community. And for a time, it was the only thing that made me happy. Out of it, I developed skills that gave me the confidence to create my own job and change my life for the better. It's surreal to acknowledge that depression pushed me to carve out a new direction for my life, and now I'm embracing it wholeheartedly. It almost killed me, yet motivated me to fight harder than ever before, and take steps that have now given me some semblance of hope for the first time in years. Depression hurt me. It changed me warped my perspective, and brought me to the very edge where I wanted to end it all. But I'm still here. I'm still here because I refused to let it beat me. I only hope others can find the same strength within that kept me going. Most of my childhood was centered around bullying, isolation, and a general lack of confidence in myself and who I am. And yeah, a lot of that has unfortunately leaked its way into my adult life. There was a time where I was pretty good at hiding my struggles from the world around me and the people that loved me, trying to wear a smile on my face and laugh in the face of all those dark thoughts that were clouding my mind from day to day. But unfortunately, it has recently became incredibly difficult to wear that same smile. Maybe it's a side effect of bottling up all those emotions for so long. I never really made much of an effort to speak to people seriously about the issue back then. Not my family, and not my friends. 
I decided to instead struggle on my own in order to lessen the burden on those around me because mental health is hard on everyone who is exposed to it. But why am I saying all this? What is really the point of talking about my problems to a bunch of people on the internet who don't know me and probably will never know me? Well, because we really need to talk about these kinds of topics now more than ever. Many out there, especially the older crowd, love to discount the real issue that is staring this generation in the face. I've said this many times to people in my personal life, and I will keep saying it until the day where it clicks in people's minds. Depression doesn't give a shit about how many gadgets or toys you have or how much money you have in your bank account. It doesn't care if you have zero friends or a hundred friends, if you're married with kids or not. You can be at the highest point in your life Everything is smooth sailing and the parasite that is this big sad this depression will slither its way into your life and just raw dog the shit out of whatever you have going on. It doesn't give two fucks about where you are in your life. The worst part is I have to battle this toxic point of view even with my own family who've asked on multiple occasions what do you have to be depressed about but I don't feel like me or anyone else has to justify why we are feeling depressed this is why many people who do struggle with this condition choose to suffer in solitude because people when confronted with it far too often try to downplay the struggle and if we keep trying to sweep the issue under the rug then we will never find a solution and more and more people will go on suffering and in really tragic cases we can see more people losing their lives some of which don't even get the chance to reach adulthood i don't care who you are children or anyone for that matter taking their own life is a tragedy that needs to be prevented the fact that people, including myself, have to battle thoughts of wanting to commit suicide needs to be treated with more sensitivity and genuine concern in our society. Yeah, so take it from someone who just turned 26 this year and yet has known since about 2014 that something's been up with the inner workings of his noggin. Like, I, I learned that about myself through a wellness screening at my college because I was doing volunteer hours at that thing. I had vaguely suspected that I might have one kind of disorder or another for years leading up to that. And yet it took me till then and there to get a professional opinion on it after filling out a survey. And an additional f four or five years or so before I actually did anything proactive about it. It's all well and good to say, oh, just sleep better, eat better, commit to goals, write a schedule, just stay on track. But life gets hard. It's really easy for things to get complicated and to neglect your self, your physical and mental health. It's it's tough. And as a creative, it's very crippling for your own output and your own sense of fulfillment when you're pursuing various projects. Like, I made a handful of things that I'm really proud of and can hang my hat on in the time that it took me to finally start seeing a shrink and start taking medication. But ultimately, I was one relative having a stroke or a heart attack away from just total madness, chaos, you know? There's no shame in getting help. In this meme -y world where any popular conversation about mental health is tainted by fucking sponsors or tryhards who think that it's just a bunch of Gen Z or Tumblrite idiots complaining about something that doesn't exist. I'm here to say, yeah, it does exist. No need to blow it out of proportion, but no need to ignore it either. I don't know. Hope this made sense. One of the main ways that I attempt to cope with my depression is with laughter laughing at my own depression, laughing at my own suicidal thoughts. This is just one of the main ways that 
I personally try to cope. It's one of the great things about dark humor. It allows us to cope with subjects such as mental health, uh, murder, suicide, rape, or a lot of other touchy subject matters that, you know, fall heavy on people's hearts these days. But being able to laugh at these horrible things makes it easier to cope with the reality that we're in. For years, I have made jokes about killing myself because being able to laugh at suicide helps me realize how silly that decision might be. I'm not going to give depression the power to take away my laughter. It's already taken enough from my life, but I'm not giving it my ability to laugh. Fuck that. But if there is one huge point behind why I made this video at all, well, it was to put a voice out there that mental health is a real thing. It's not just something that angsty teens and sad boys make up to elicit sympathy on the internet. Now, it should be said that there is a difference between feeling depressed and being depressed. Everyone on this earth will feel depression at some point in their life. But the big discrepancy that needs to be established here is that depression as a condition is like this perpetual cycle of feeling sad, hopeless, and unmotivated nearly every single day. And I know there's a lot of debate around things such as uh, medication, antidepressants, and all of that. I'm not going to really comment on that personally. Um, I do go to therapy and I am strongly considering taking medication because I think it might be really beneficial for me in, in my case. I know people who have taken antidepressants who have seen their lives dramatically improve. Their quality of life is so much better. They're so much happier. They have so much more motivation to carry on and that's great. But obviously there are some cases where people don't have a good reaction and it makes it worse and uh, both sides of the coin are 100% valid. Really, the whole point here is that the first step to the solution is that we need to acknowledge people's struggles, not downplay or dismiss someone else's experiences just because you don't understand it or haven't personally been through it yourself. I nor anyone has to justify why we have such a negative take on life. So, if you want to take anything from this video, just please try to practice empathy. It can go a long way in reminding someone that you do care about them and that you're there for them. You might not be able to understand why they're going through what they're going through, but you're there by their side and you're supporting them, reminding them that they are never alone in the world. And that really can change someone's life. How long have you battled depression and how has it affected your life? Uh, well, I've been battling depression since uh, mid-2017. I think that would be two years and it has affected my life very drastically. I dropped out of school for it, you know, because of my severe depression, which was in 2018 and i have social anxiety now and even though i'm trying to uh, improve on my <clears throat> even though i'm trying to better myself uh, it has never gone away like i've been to therapies multiple therapies and you know i've been taking medicines for it i mean like it has uh gone down since then but it hasn't fully recovered uh, me i mean like i haven't fully gotten recovered from depression but i'd say uh it's getting better i guess even though at the time of this recording uh i can't talk properly i can't be enthusiastic i feel like whenever whenever i try to you know record myself on like doing a voiceover or something like that even for a youtube video or anything I don't come out as a real person, you know, like I can't, like I'm not able to express myself fully. Yeah, I think depression 
I think depression has like affected me very drastically. Even though I feel like it's getting better, it hasn't gone away. I do have hope that, you know, I'll get better someday. Yeah. But that's really all I've got to say about the topic. I know, very heavy. My channel is usually not this um, depressing, uh, no pun intended, but I just think it was the time to finally say something because I just feel this issue has been kind of staring me in the face for a long time and I just I really wanted to put my voice out there along with other people I really appreciate everyone who uh, gave me their testimonies to put in this video I really appreciate it like at first this was just gonna be kind of a personal video talking about my struggles but then I talked to some other people and I realized this could become something more I could it could be just more than me talking into a microphone about my experiences but showing that it's not just me but that there's other people and it helped me see that you know I'm not the only one going through all this there's other people who feel the exact same way that I do and that's comforting and I hope that anybody that's watching if you're going through struggles please try to take this video as you know the confidence to realize that your voice can be heard your feelings are 100% valid and that there's a lot of people out there that understand what you're going through and you really don't have to be alone in this but with all that said i will catch you guys in the next one